Hi everyone! The inspiration for this painting was the fact that it's Labor Day weekend and the leaves are already starting to turn colors. I've seen birds starting to fly south in large flocks so it's just and it was kind of cool today almost sweater weather here in Chicago so uh, I'm drawing a cardinal and I wanted to have some fall leaves I decided on oak leaves uh, I was thinking the maple leaves when they turn bright red and orange uh, would kind of compete with the the cardinal so I decided to go with oak leaves because they're a little more dull and um, another thing that I did there's quite a few varieties of oak leaves and I went with some that had the jagged edges there's some that have a more rounded edge um, there are always variegated leaves that are um, I don't know if that's a word but like you know how the, as you can see the shape of them right now um, and these ones have kind of points at the, each tip and there are some that are more rounded um, and like I said um, I thought the colors wouldn't compete as much with the uh, the red cardinal and so I'm gonna add a couple acorns here uh, I had a plumber at my house the other day and he had no idea that acorns came from oak trees uh, he thought they would come from an acorn tree I guess <laughs> so um, yeah anyway uh, so we're going to um, sorry I cut off a little bit of the the feet of this bird uh, in a few minutes after I sketch I I fix everything so uh, yeah I want to make the leaves look as natural as possible so just have a few at different angles it is nice to have the little vein running right through it because that kind of helps show the direction of the leaf so I have an Aurelian yellow an Indian yellow a cadmium red a queen of Cridone red a cadmium orange I have an ultramarine purple violet an ultramarine blue and an earth a transparent earth orange so uh, I think the the transparent earth orange actually has a little different name. It's by Old Holland. Um, so on the cardinal, I'm using cadmium mixed with some, I think, the ultramarine violet. And then for uh, the next swath of color, I put down is the Queen of Credone red and I mix that with I think some of the ultramarine so it's kind of violet-y looking it cools it down even more than it already is this is just straight trans the transparent earth orangey color I was talking about I, I love this color. I mix blacks with it and I use it for a lot of organic matter like ground and earth and rocks and branches. It's great for mixing blacks. Just mix it with like ultramarine blue, phthalo blue or uh, any of the darker blues or violets or even um, Payne's gray and you've got black. I have just a touch of green on the acorns and a few of the leaves. So I decided to um, go with a bright orange vein down the middle. Um, I decided these oak leaves can just kind of look, like I said, they're pretty dull and they can be kind of lifeless look like, looking actually, I think when they um, are in the autumn season right before they fall off the tree but sometimes as they're turning um, they'll be a little two-toned so I'm and they'll have a little bit more uh, color right in the uh, veins so that's what I'm trying to do right here and that'll help also I think 
add a little bit of color and movement not really movement but variety to the paint uh, the painting make it look more three-dimensional and the veins are a little bit uh, I don't want them to dry just like that um, that hard uh, so when I add this next layer of watercolor it'll kind of soften the veins a little bit and I believe that most of this is just the Indian yellow and then uh, I mixed in the Indian yellow just a touch of violet especially on the back leaves the ones behind the burr because those are going to be farther away so I wanted them to not be as bright as the ones in the foreground So this is just the first layer, but I'm going to go back and do another layer on both the bird and these leaves and finish the acorns. I'm also going to put another layer on the branches. And it's, I think that one of the great things about watercolor is that you can build up layers to create a richness and all sorts of effects. And then I like the fact that you can leave some areas transparent with just like one layer, which is something that uh, is harder, to, I think, to do with oil paints um, to get those transparencies. So uh, yeah, I, I want to really work that. So um, I do end up covering, uh, I, I like the way the water kind of pooled on the stomach of the bird, but it doesn't really add much to this painting. I think it kind of takes away. So I end up covering it uh, down the road. And I, I just want to make the bird look a little richer than he is. I think sometimes watercolors can look a little anemic and this being an autumn uh, painting I wanted to make sure that it, uh, it had those rich deep uh, fall type vibrant colors. So the layers are really important for that. Uh, just building up the layers and of course this is uh, Arches hot press watercolor paper um, 9 by 12 you might also notice that this bird seems quite large compared to the oak leaves uh, there are especially certain varieties have smaller leaves so uh, that yeah this is just a bird that's just a really big bird <laughs> and he's on a branch that has tinier oak leaves and so yeah now there's more uh, either ultramarine violet or the ultramarine blue and uh, here I'm going to cover the white up here that was exposed with uh, some black I mixed with the ultramarine blue and transparent earth. Gonna darken the legs and the feet. And I added a little bit of blue to the transparent earth orange to, to kind of darken the, the branch a little bit. And I wanted to keep the ratios, um, a lot of times to make black I'll do half and half of uh, the blue and the transparent earth. And so this I just put maybe like a quarter blue to the transparent just to tone it down and darken it a little bit. But I still want it to look more brown than black. All right, I'm just a uh, touch of green 
right now, which was uh, ultramarine and aurelian yellow. And I accidentally got some splatters and thought they looked so nice that I purposely splattered a, a little bit more. Here's where I really think this makes a huge difference is this big swath of cadmium red. Um, I think it's literally straight out of the tube cadmium. There might be a touch of blue in it. I think there might be a little touch of blue because I wanted um, I didn't want anything really straight out of the tube except for the orange veins. Uh, I wanted to keep it more muted colors. Now here's what I was talking about, kind of pushing the boundaries a little bit. I'm adding a few leaves here that are just going to be one layer and very transparent. And that's just because if you look at a tree, uh, you know, or if you had a photo, you know how you kind of soften the background and it gets a little fuzzy? That's kind of the effect I'm going here for here, or maybe light shining through some of the uh, leaves. Uh, so I'm just adding a few, uh, just kind of filling in some of the areas also that I feel I have too much white space and balancing the colors and uh, the shapes out a little bit, the shapes in the composition. And so these are gonna just stay with this one layer, which will also help you see that this is watercolor paint because um, you'll be able to see the flow of the watercolor in these little transparent leaves. Just touching up the details here. Oh, we're gonna add one more here. Down at the bottom, you can't hardly see it. But yeah, that looks a lot better. I really like, I think that touch of orange ties in with his beak and um, really just completes the painting. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video and stay tuned for more bird paintings coming soon.